verse number 8. Howbeit then, when you knew not God, you did service unto them which by nature are no gods. But now, after that you have known God, or rather known of Him, how turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto you desire to be in bondage again, again in, uh, to bondage. You observe days and months and times and years. I'm afraid of you. They got all kind of religion. Just the wrong one. That's the world Paul ministered to. And what I'm saying to you is we're going back into that world. Now, let me, let me do it this way. I mentioned a minute ago about the, about the cycles. Here, here's a book called The Fourth Turning. I've talked to you about this. I think most of you have heard me talk about it enough. You kind of know what I'm talking about. We're in the wintertime. In Genesis chapter 8, God says, here's the way, when he set up nation, nationalism, he said, here's the way a nation's going to operate. There's going to be springtime, there's going to be summertime, there's going to be fall, and there's going to be winter. In that cycle of, of, of life, which one is the most important, the most critical? Well, it's the winter time. Because what you plant in the springtime, you decide to plant and you buy the seeds in the winter. Is that right? Yeah. You don't get out in the spring and say, well, I wonder what I'm going to plant here today. You better go already have the seed, have everything. You make your plans in the winter. The winter is where the decisions are made that determine what you plant in the spring. You know what you're going to cultivate in the summer? What you plant in the spring. You don't need to get out there in a big field of soybeans and say, you know, I really declare thee to be wheat. It don't work that way. It's soybeans because that's what you planted. Because that's what you chose to plant. So the summertime, all you've got, all your choices there are based upon what does it take to grow soybeans. In the fall, you know what you're going to harvest? Soybeans. Why? Because that's what you cultivated. That's what you planted. That's what, the decision part, was the critical moment, is in the wintertime. In the fall, it all falls apart. Now, you can, th- th- this book is the most present history book I've ever read outside of the Bible. The guys don't believe the Bible. They're not by the two, two unsafe college professors. One of them's dead now. But what, when I first read this book, back in the 90s, I said, wow, these guys understand in history what the Bible teaches. It's going to be there. I didn't know enough history to put this together. They did. But I knew the Bible would recognize it. And that cycle of life. And it matches about the cycle of a human life because your life goes to that. You have a spring. You're a, you're, you're a child. You have the summer. You're a youth. You have the fall. You're an adult. You have the winter. You're a falling apart and dying. <laughs> you're in your eldership. You know, throw you out nobody pays attention to you. That whole cycle. Now, we're in that wintertime cycle right now. We're right in the middle of it. In fact, interestingly enough, if you took the, the, the way these guys did it, 2020 was the hinge point in, the, in, in, in the, the wintertime. And it sure turned out to be an interesting year, hadn't it? I wanted to read you something that, that they say. An initial spark will trigger a chain reaction of unyielding responses, further, furthering emergencies. The core elements of the scenario, debt, civil decay, and, and global disorder, we have them. That's what makes the core of, of what goes on in the, in the wintertime. I try to get to the kicker here. The fourth turning, which is what I'm calling winter, could mark the end of modernity. Modernity is what people use to describe uh, the culture of the last hundred years. The Western seclorum will come to an end. Now, what they're talking about, the Western Seclorum, which began in the mid 15th century with the, with the Renaissance, they're talking about the first 500 years, then you have the second 500 years, then you have the third 500 years. The Middle Ages, the Dark Ages, 1000 to 1500. 
1500 with the Protestant Reformation till today, that cycle, they're saying, will end. There are not just, there are these 500 cycles in history. You, you can trace all that through. In other words, what's happening and what they're predicting is that a new dark age will settle in until some new civilization could be cobbled together. It will close the book on the political constitution, popular culture, moral standing in the world the word America has come to signify. Now that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty dire kind of predictions. But as I, read, as I read through it, you get a sense that that's really on the line. And you know that. Now, let me, let me read you something else. that, And I read you this because this is, this is critical to get a hold of what's going on here. To be awake. Here is an article. Um, it's on YouTube. Uh, you, you can, you can, I can give you the, the YouTube address if you want to watch this video and, and read this article. It's in the, the New American magazine. There's now proof that there were very dark forces behind Black Lives Matter. As a pastor in Chicago, I did some radio programs about some of this back in several months ago. And as a black, as an African American black pastor in Chicago, he said something that I, I, I really took to heart. BLM, Black Lives Matter, is a sentiment that the black world has had and lived with for, for two centuries. And by that they mean we matter too. We want to be equal with everyone else. And you'll hear, you'll hear people say, we want the law to treat us equal. We want the culture to treat us equally. And in the black community, that sentiment is there because they sense they haven't been treated equally. There's a thing with the Jim Crow laws, separate but equal. They were separate, but they never were equal. And there's this cry, this sentiment, we need to be treated equally. And I don't think anybody in this room would disagree with that. Paul didn't, Colossians 4, verse 2, when he says, here's what the social standard that a believer should have. It ought, be, it ought to be equal and just. And we have a mantra. We say, equal justice under the law. You don't have justice under the law if it isn't equal. So that sentiment is there. And what the Marxist came along and did is they reached in and took that sentiment, which is a legitimate sentiment felt by the black community, and made it a slogan for a Marxist political movement. So that when you hear BLM, Black Lives Matter, you hear the political movement, the black community hears the sentiment. See the difference? What this pastor said, say Black Lives Matter too, because that's what we're saying. Not Black Lives Matter Inc., because that's what they're saying. See the difference in that? They have ingeniously branded a openly Marxist viewpoint. What you are watching in the culture right now is a Marxist revolution. You are watching the Bolshevik revolution American style. And if you know anything about the Bolshevik revolution that, that, that uh, Russia experienced in the early 1900s, starting in 1905 and culminated in 1917. If you know anything about it, it's the same people, same ideas, the people that run Black Lives Matter, Inc. They say, I'm going to read you the quote, that we are trained Marxists. That's their goal, okay? That's who they are, who they say they are. You're watching that for a minute, so. And you're watching a very carefully crafted political movement that has set the stage so that they succeed. Now, you can look at all of that, you can decry it, you can say, but there's something else you need to think about in regard to that. There's now proof that there is very, a very dark force behind the Black Lives Matter, Inc. And it's not just the blatant Marxism of its founders and leaders. The darkness literally includes summoning dead spirits and allowing them to work through Black Lives Matter leaders. You've heard, maybe you've seen the video, where they say, 
Say her name. Say her name. Say her name. Say his name. You've seen them do that. They have rallies where they say their name and they're doing that. The reason that they do that is there is an African religion that they practice. That's the the name of that's the source. That's the name of the religion. Look it up. Look it up on Wikipedia. A dumb source like that. The Yorba Ifa. Now Yorba is a part is is a is a people group in in uh, in Africa, East, Western Africa, in, in Central Nigeria, that part. But as a people group, they have a religion called Ifa. That religion focuses on ancestor worship. And when you call the ancestors, what you do is you call their name, and then there is a phrase you use after it. You watch on, they put all this stuff on video, now you can see everything. And you can take this, 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 this coolers lady, who is a co-founder of BLM Inc., who says, I'm a trained Marxist, but she practices this religion. And you can see her in rallies say their name, calling out the crowd to say their name, and then she will say that phrase. In other words, what they're doing is seeking to communicate with the dead and have the dead spirits work through them. Now, in the Bible, that's called divination. It's called necromancy. In the Bible, it's an abomination. There is a spiritual force, a religious spiritual force working behind this. You look at the political stuff. Listen, the Marxism isn't nearly the dangerous part of this. This is the danger. This is where it goes. The whole say his name mantra. When you say, here, here's what the coolest woman says. When you say the names right... So we speak their names, we say her name, we say their names. We do that all the time. We, we invoke that spirit. And then those spirits actually become present with us and work through us. So spiritually, the Black Lives Matter, I think that it's, it's, just, it's not just us. I'm quoting this lady now. I feel like so many leaders... And, and so many organizations are deeply engaged in, in a pretty important spiritual practice. And they're practicing paganism. And that is, that's the force behind these things. The co-founder of Black Lives Matter, Inc., Patricia Coolers, uh, she, she's, she says uh, that she consults spiritual entities, and that it's following their work through her. They're following their work through her. BLM Los Angeles founder and California University professor of African studies, Melina Abdullah, reveals more than, than she thought she would when she said, maybe I'm sharing too much, but we've become so intimate with the spirits that we call on regularly, like each of them seems to, to have a different presence and personality, you know, I laugh a lot with Wakisha, who is a dead person, you know, and I didn't meet her in body, but I met her through this work. And I, I mean, you, I, I've got, you can read a copy of that. I don't want to bore you with it. I just want you to understand that stuff's out there. And that's, that's per, and you see, you see people engaged in that. They may not know what they're doing. But that spirit, that power of, of, of Satan, that power of the lie grabs their mind and enforces the darkness. There is a spiritual wickedness that we fight against, Ephesians 6, 12. You know that. And the, the, to me, the, the really... The thing I struggle with probably the most in it 
is I watch Christian people, I watch grace people, and I see hatred, anger, fear, greed, just like I see it in the lost world over the political and social issues involved in this. And can I tell you, when you're thinking about it like the lost world is thinking about it, you're missing something. You're missing the real issue. And the real issue is going to be the spiritual thing that's behind it. Much of what we do in the church <laughs> is, is rooted in paganism. And I think, you go back to Second Timothy, and I'm, I'm not going to be much longer, I hope. But it's fascinating to me, and, I, and I, you know, I've preached against some of this stuff all my life, never thinking that I, there would come a time when